Scotland, these ports are some of the cruelest seas in the world. This is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now, in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All the good fish at our gates. miles west of Scotland, far into the Atlantic Ocean, the Arcane is searching for large haddocks. The boat is in massive debt, but skipper Charlie McBride hopes that a 250-mile steam out of her usual fishing grounds will bring a change in fortune. Charlie's gamble appears to pay off. The first haul at the new location produces a bag full of fish. But there's a problem. It's actually a little cold now. We don't want to stay cold. Scientists say that cod stocks are close to collapse. Consequently, a quota system restricts fishermen to landing only a certain percentage of cod within each catch. Any cod caught beyond the quota has to be discarded. Is there any chance that we've had enough quota for cod so we've got a cod dead? Dead as a dodo. We've got to put the bag over the side. There you go. Bye bye. They put the bag over the gut. See what they have tomorrow. But we keep it in the birds illegal. We don't want to catch the cod, we just can't help catch the cod. You can't stick a sign in the net saying no cod please. Because the, you know, if the fish are on the ground you've got to catch it. And it gets worse every year because the cod stocks are building up. There's more cod on the ground, yet the quotas isn't coming up quick enough. So every year there's more cod being dumped. Last year, the McBrides were prosecuted for landing and selling fish rather than throwing them back. Now, if they can't repay £400,000, they face jail. Every fish the McBrides throw away just adds to their debts. We're going to have to stay somewhere else now for tomorrow's morning. We keep clear the cod. Fish is sick. We're right here to catch fish, and then when you find fish, you've got to run away from it. 400 miles away from the Arcane, on the other side of the North Sea, there's a pair of hunters at work. Last year, this team, towing one massive net between them, caught nearly two million pounds worth of fish. The sunrise is skippered by John Stephen. Her fishing partner is the Ocean Dawn, skippered by Ian Ritchie, a veteran of over 35 years at sea. Yeah! Three marks! Me and Ian are fishing together for six now. Six years. Which is doing great. The crew's doing great, so it's a good partners. Night time's out at the end, we're both thinking exactly where they see him. That's why we've been doing well. All the gear expenses split between the two boats. It's in a 50-50 partnership on everything. The Sunrise is shooting a brand new 20,000 pound net. It's going to have to catch a lot of fish to pay for it. In charge of the new net is John Stevens' son, John Jr. Take a look through the roller. Watch out! Just stop control, just leave it. That's a new net for the first time, so hopefully it'll come up with a good haul. Hopefully it'll come up with one piece. The new net's 
shall we ride? So we'll see how she performs. A quarter of a mile apart, the pair team tow one huge net. Its mouth is 200 feet across. After five hours, they haul for the first time. That's a new net. It's an Angus Fisher net. Rubbish. What even call the fish? Things. We are in. I can't just go on and scrub the thing. I can't just scrub as you're spoken. Say, try, huh? Different thingies, huh? You and when I type, you're not going to be the thingy. Get out, right? Get out. I'll try it, Mark. It's their George's fault. It's a brand new night, right out in the fog, right? You know what I mean? We'll bring a fish and a goldfish for us. Very poor roll. It is. I'll be saying we're looking at 15 boxes. This fish room will hold 900 boxes. That's 15 down, 895 to go. The arcade has the opposite problem. Too many fish. We're on the wrong side. Charlie McBride has steamed overnight to new fishing grounds to find the haddock. The cod are dying in the hopper. The fishermen find themselves frantically trying to save the lives of the fish they've just caught. Oh, The pressure is building on Skipper Charlie. The arcane has been at sea for five days, burning fuel and catching the wrong sort of fish. Okay. Okay. It's over here, it's over here, children. But I think we're under just a bit more than most. On the pair trawlers, John Stephen is also feeling the pressure. He's got a new net, but no fish. Let's fish it, I'm just to get off and sit jump up. In an effort to get his fishing right, they're making adjustments to the mesh. Go on and get it, boys, just leave it. Go on, go on. Yeah, one six and a No, no, a double blue. Just left side one, no matter what it was, yes. Different generations of fishermen handle stress in different ways. My father lets it get them a bit too much. He takes stuff a bit past it too much sometimes, he does. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Don't I do too long? I skip it too long, so it's worse like there's a plan you know. It is the other side working. While they struggle to fix Sunrise's new net, the pair trawlers continue fishing with the ocean drums. <laughs> Looks like half a 
Always come here, look brutal. The small catch in Ian's net compounds their problems. They'll have to move to fresh ground. Oh, it's a by nightfall, they moved on. But John thinks he may have cracked the problem with the new net. You've been deep with the balls and I've never had more flotation than normal balls. So, we're going to change it. Should sort it out. Hopefully it will. The success of the whole trip rests upon one £20,000 net. But this investment is a drop in the ocean compared to the money being spent on the latest boat to join Peterhead's fishing fleet. At 1,000 tons and 40 meters in length, the Viking Monarch will be the largest white fish trawler in the UK. The man with the ambition and deep pockets to get her fishing is skipper Jason Strophy. Well, it's looking good now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's taken some time, but it's looking good now. I'll be a bit there for a few of us, but I should have been there. I thought there was too many unforeseen disasters. But the boat is no stranger to unforeseen disaster. Before this refit, she was an Irish Atlantic trawler called the Solstice. One of her crew was killed at sea in a winch accident, and then three years ago, she went bust. Now renamed the Viking Monarch, Jason hopes he can change her luck. Uh, there was a hospital that was brought before which was removed. Uh, um, there have been one or two accidents of what has brought in the past, you know, and, and there been a fatality, so we um, it's the start of a new year up here up this boat, so we're going to uh, put our own horses on and take our own luck and board, so every little thing helps. A new vessel of this kind would cost Jason's family at least five million pounds, but they've got this boat at a knockdown price. Even if the refit cost another half a million, to fill her fuel tanks for the first time comes to fifty thousand pounds. To get the boat fishing again, Jason's head hunted one of the UK's most successful large trawler skippers, Yorkshireman John Musgrave. Her crew has been handpicked from other boats, but it's the first time they've worked together as a team on a trawler of this size. Well, they're all strange, you know, it's a strange game, strange game, so... Fishing on this scale brings huge rewards, but can be extremely dangerous. Everything on this boat's really powerful, you know, and the gear's very heavy, and everybody's just got to keep their wits about them. The first few days of this trip will be spent practicing shooting and hauling the gear. With Jason in the wheelhouse and John on deck, the two skippers try to knock into shape an unfamiliar boat and unfamiliar crew. Get Fresh start be enough to change Viking Monarch's luck. It's gonna break the wire! The pair trawlers are also desperate for a change in fortune. They're about to find out if all John's tinkering with the new net will bring them their first decent haul. That's how they 
may be half a ton of fish in the cod end, but it's not what they're hoping for. The cod is just rubbish. Again, too much small fish, not a good quality. Hard breaking to say that. Whoa! But there's some compensation. The fish may be small, but at least they've got the net working. We think we've a problem solved these nets, so it's good. Those fish, you see, we just gotta find them this week. <laughs> the pairs shoot their net again. Now all the skippers have to do is find the fish. It's getting serious. A lot of days out the harbour now and there's no fish aboard the boat. We've 12 men to pay as well. Just four months to keep. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. We'll get some fish. Have we done fish, fish? <laughs> there's black managers to pay. <laughs> Fuel to pay, it's a fortune. Jeepers. The Viking Monarch, the UK's largest whitefish trawler, is also struggling to change her luck. She's been at sea for three days and has hit a serious snag. Bloody hell. We'll just haul it up and get the net clear. Her brand new net has just been ripped apart by rocks on the seabed. Every boat has her own character. And on the arcane, veteran skipper Charlie McBride knows precisely why boats are always female. People sometimes ask when you refer to a ship as a she or a her. Few reasons springs to mind. One is a ship like a woman, it's not the initial acquisition or acquiring of the bill of luxury because they do. It's the upkeep and the heavy and stuff after that. Another one is just like this ship now, it's just had a good slap of good fired right her. It looks pretty for a while once the kid wears off and start to show their age a bit then, a bit rougher looking. And uh, quite often it takes a strong hand at the helm to steer them in the right direction. Today's a special day on the arcane. Charlie's prepared a surprise for Keith, the oldest member of his crew. Lovingly wrapped in newspaper and gaffer tape, the crew have bought Keith something more important than food, money and sleep. There you are. 200 of his favourite cigarettes. Another good cough. <laughs> Thanks, Mother. Many more to live, son. Hope so. Happy birthday, Keith. All the best, man. I spent a lot of birthdays at sea. Happy birthday. The 16th, the 21st, the 18th, the 60s, the 60th. <laughs> That's silly. Yeah. Time to hang a lot of something lately, I think. <laughs> Charlie's dodged the cod for the time being, but the nets caught more unwanted species. Gannets. Gannets are bathing down into the water off the fish. So many covers for trying to do On the other 
outside in the North Sea, just when the Viking Monarch's crew could do with some plain sailing, they're hit by a gale. for the crew and too dangerous really. As conditions deteriorate, the Viking Monarch gets a first decent haul. Dear, oh dear. There's two tons of fish rolling around on the lake. Somebody's gonna get hurt doing this. Sick. We'll lose your control. Tell me Mr. Bottle like that, bad luck, somebody's gonna get hurt. Viking Monarch catches fish. Despite the conditions, they keep fishing through the night. Half the size of the Viking Monarch, the pair trawlers are also struggling to haul the force 10 conditions. of the two boats brings a host of dangers. This is about the worst day for you. Both boats are touched each side of the net. You can't have a over the same. So you just got to be a bit more careful if we're not going to get you. That's poor on brother mate. You don't want to be touching an elegance and everything like that. As night falls, the weather gets even worse. The pair team are finding it impossible to find the fish, let alone catch them. I've never seen it like this. I've never had a start like this. This is in stark contrast to the pairs, the Viking monarch seems to have shaken off her bad luck. The halls just keep getting bigger. Jason's first trip target of 1400 boxes is beginning to look realistic. She's now registered coming up to 700. We've not been out a week yet, so hopefully we can put another 700 onto that, but <laughs> I think that might be too optimistic. We'll see. But Jason soon has cause to celebrate. The next haul is his biggest yet. Five tons of fish in the hopper. All hands are needed to process the catch. That's a large, large quality. 
The fish are mounting up in a hold and the crew won't be going home at night. The pair trawlers are not so fortunate. The storms have forced them to seek the nearest shelter, a 60 mile steam through the Norwegian fjords to the port of Bergen. Fourth day for 24 hours, so a wee bit of peace in here. Save some fuel for a day, go tomorrow again. For the younger members of the crew, it's a new experience. Alright, yeah, the crew have been here for so different. The two crews decide to make the best of a bad job and head into town. Skipper Ian takes the crew for a morale raising pint, but no one is keen to buy the first round. But John Stephen is in no mood for a run ashore. We can't blame anyone but ourselves. It's a happier ending for the Viking monarch. If the success of her first trip is anything to go by, the UK's biggest whitefish trawler has buried her troubled past. Ah, it's good. Great, yeah. It'll be nice when we get this fish landed tonight and get a few hours in bed. Because they had to put the ship through the purchase with the weather. Yeah. The crew handled it well, the ship handled it well. So we leave that and we got a trip in and that everything went alright. And yeah, I'm pleased. The Viking monarch landed nearly 100 tons of fish and sold them for £80,000. A handsome catch for her first 10 day trip. In the Atlantic, the Arcane's enjoying perfect fishing conditions, and there's a surprise waiting in the cod end. A rare deep water skate. That's not a big blue. It's not the most valuable, so it's all the real nice little day. The skate weighs 60 kilos, but there's no market for it. But there's no way they'll be throwing away the rest of the catch. Makes a high value fish, that's what we're looking for. It's an elusive flatfish called Megro, hardly eaten in Britain. But it fetches a great price with the French and Spanish buyers. They're worth having 150 to 250, 300 days, 300 pound of birds. If you get three or four of them a hold, seven meter holes a day, you start yarn up. After eight days at sea, the arcane is landing her catch. They learn just enough from this trip to keep their creditors at bay. We're not going to end because uh, this is we're fighters. The fishermen. The fishermen are fighters. A great motto of the seas. Never despairing and that's what's little despair we keep on it. We'll be here in ten years' time. I might not be, but the sun will be bright, still be fishing. God willing. Next time on Trollerman. Drama on the high seas. John Buchan goes head to head with a Spanish trawler in Scottish waters. From now on, part of you on board, now I saw I will shoot my paper, and I will throw a light across every man you have. And the pair team face a new crisis. Here, Corey, there is never seen a drop, just never. 
के साथ